some context. I don't live in America. There's no basement or attic we use as storage space. Instead, we have this small room connected to the living room, which doubles as a bomb shelter and a storage area. My family is Chinese and we are religious Taoists. We believe in ghosts, afterlife, and you know, whatever else. Not me though, blame it on the net and stuff. There is always a scientific explanation of sorts, a leaky pipe and the likes. There's always superstitious beliefs in my household, and not without reason. It's bad luck to enter the hotel room without knocking first. Enter with your left foot when visiting hospitals or houses. Do not cut your nails at night. Don't tap people's shoulder as their light will burn out and things will follow you home. Those are stories for another day. Today, I would like to talk about my storage room, commonly known as a storeroom. We live in a very tall, multi-story apartment. They're cheaper than houses here. There are about six units per floor out of the 18 floors. We didn't pick the fourth floor, as it's an unlucky number that resembles the Chinese word death. And we didn't pick the 18th, as it represents the levels of hell. You get it, really superstitious and stuff. We missed a good location and got stuck with one at a mildly inconvenient location. It's not too bad I guess. Back to the main point. We have a storeroom which was painted white to match the house theme. It was there since we had moved in earlier this year. There were two door handles, one of them painted silver, which was normal, and the other was painted matte black and out of place. The weird thing was not that there were two door handles, but that it was situated right opposite each other. The door only opens one way. The housing agent told us something about a misplaced design that got through and honestly, we didn't care much as it was always an interesting feature that stood out when guests came over. I neglected to mention that I have a thing for storerooms. The warm musky smell is really comforting to me. I occasionally open the room to take a whiff before closing it. I'm not sure if there are any health implications since it's mostly dust. My sister, I'll call her Emily since we both only have Chinese names and it's tough to remember. We always play hide and seek in our small apartment. Sometimes we hide in between our bed. It has a bottom layer which you can pull out to sleep on and we share a room. At that time, we were tiny enough to squeeze into the gap. She never could find me there and I never revealed it to her. Another place I loved to hide was the storeroom. There are plenty of shelves attached to the wall. It's structurally safe. I would always climb to the upper corner near the blind spot and she could never find me. Sometimes we play find the object instead because it's easier and the storeroom is the best spot with everything being thrown there anyway. One night, I was getting up to drink some water due to having a sore throat. And on my way back, I wanted to take a whiff of my favorite smell. And I opened the room. Except it was dark and my muscle memory had failed me. I reached out for the knob nearest to the kitchen, which was the non-functional one. I pulled it anyway, knowing that it would not open because... I guess when you already twist the handle, you would pull it automatically. The inside was the same. It was the same old storage room we had used all the time, but it shouldn't have opened. I went inside and turned on the lights before closing the room. The hinges were only attached on one end. There was no way. I opened the usual door handle. There are two handles on the inside too, and I exited the storeroom. Nothing out of the ordinary happened, and figured I should reveal this to my parents the next day. It was an interesting discovery. I told Emily first and she scoffed at me, 
obviously thinking that I was trying to trick her. She went to prove it to me by opening the door, which didn't open. Was it a dream? I thought to myself, bewildered. Well, I played it off as a joke and I left it at that. I was always the groggy type when I woke up from a nap or sleep. Maybe I remembered wrong. Nothing out of the ordinary happened afterwards. I would still sniff my storeroom and went about my days as usual. Little did I know, Emily had found out about the hiding spot and used it as her own. Being the older sibling, I had been given the task to fetch her back from school when she was done. We had different school timings. Mine ends during noon and hers in the evening. We were playing hide and seek before our parents were home and she had hid in the storeroom. Of course I figured out since it was my spot. I crept outside the door and heard her giggling already. There is a vent at the top so sounds do enter and escape quite easily. Hmm, I wonder where you could be. Maybe the storeroom. I purposefully voiced out loud, just enough for her to hear. I heard her suck in a huge breath and held back on breathing. I chuckled internally. Sometimes I would just let her win so she feels better. Alright, I give up. You can come out now. And I heard her climbing down the shelves to open the door. I stared at the door, ready to give her a jump scare, and to my surprise, I saw the matte black candle turning downwards instead. She didn't even have on the lights. Figured she would have gotten the wrong one. Emily was really, really competitive. I couldn't hide in the darkness all by myself. To my surprise, the door opened the wrong way. It couldn't have. A gush of cold wind blew past me as the door opened. I waited, ready to pounce. Emily didn't exit the room, and she never did. I went inside to check and she wasn't there. It's like she disappeared. Was the game still on? I was so sure she was inside. More than a little confused, I kept calling out to her to come out. I had lost and the game was over. I wouldn't scare her or tickle her. Soon the feelings of worry turned into dread, as she continued hiding and my parents were almost home. I would be in trouble if anything happened to Emily, and more importantly, I don't actually know if anything had happened to her. When my parents came home to my sobbing and crying out for my little sister, they knew something was wrong. I told them time and time again, the storeroom ate her up. She went in and disappeared. But they were having none of it. So much for being superstitious. To their credit, they did check the storeroom but it was truly empty. I could see her footprints disturbing the settled dust on the shelves. Minutes turned to hours and hours turned to days. A police report was made. They insisted that I did not pick her up from school and somebody had abducted her. A solemn silence came over the household, and I was largely ignored and blamed for the disappearance of my sister. They couldn't even look me in the eye anymore. A week later, the arguments began. Why weren't you more responsible? You're always at work. Do you even care for the family? This was it. I knew if I didn't do anything, I would not only lose my sister, but my family as well. They started leaving food offerings for her within the following week, hallucinating that she had visited the house saying that she was hungry. It is symbolism of both respect and acceptance that she was gone. We made offerings for her every night. We hoped that she had food to eat in the afterlife if she was truly gone. That night, after my parents went to sleep in separate rooms, I snuck into the living room where the storage room is. I had a theory, a stupid and extremely superstitious theory but one nonetheless, and I was going to try it out, if not for my own curiosity then, for my little sister, 
whom I had spent my entire childhood with. I gingerly touched the black door handle and twisted, entered the room and I closed it. I sucked in a deep breath when I heard my little sister's nervous sobs from outside the room. I turned the black handle and I exited the storeroom. It was our apartment but something was off. Immediately I could feel the air was different. It was neither cold or hot, but it had been raining the entire night and it was extremely cold. Now it was silent and eerie. I couldn't feel the temperature nor the air. It was as if I was moving through the void, a non-existent space. Realization hit me when I realized I wasn't breathing for the past minute. I had no need to. I turned my attention towards the sound of my sister's sobs towards the bedroom. On my way there, I couldn't feel any weight. As if there was no gravity, but I was definitely touching the ground. I just felt weightless. The windows revealed an orange hue. I looked out and saw a blood red moon staring down at us. Our neighbor's houses were still there, as is the decorations. Something was out of place though. The vase might be a different color, their bicycles a different brand. Their windows were more worn down than usual. And that's when I turned back to look at our own house and I noticed the same thing. The pictures were hung but in different order around the house. The number of lights that we had on was more than usual. Our door handles were all in opposite directions. It wasn't safe. If I could hear my own heart, this would definitely be the time that it would be thumping in my ears. But it didn't. My body was silent. I wasn't breathing and my heart wasn't pumping. I needed to find my sister and bring us home. I ran into the room where I heard the sobs to see Emily curled up into a ball on our parents' bed. Except the room looked different. The little things were out of place. I saw the plates of offering that we had left her in the room half consumed. The look of relief that washed over her was palpable. She didn't even move though and that worried me. She kept crying my name to come and get her. To save her. I was ready to pick her up and get out of there but she was stuck. I took a closer look and her legs were fused with the bed. She was slowly melting into the furniture that she was on. Something was preventing her from leaving, or she was too assimilated to leave. The place didn't feel sinister, but it wasn't Earth and we both knew it. I pulled her hard, but it had only seemed to cause great pain to her while producing no results. I had to resort to another method, even if it meant it hurt. I went to the kitchen to grab a knife and to my surprise, it wasn't material. My hand flew right past the knife. I couldn't grab anything else either, just my sister. I dashed back to the room and took a closer look while trying to pull her back more. She was fading, becoming more translucent, something that I hadn't noticed in my panic and happiness of finding her. I remembered some things I read then. I may have not believed in the supernatural before but I did entertain myself with horror stories here and in other platforms. I reached for my pockets and found a piece of candy that I was saving. Every night since we had started the offerings, I snuck a little piece of candy from it for my own. I would prey upon it as I slept, and I ate it to soothe myself. It was Emily's favorite candy. I had brought it with me. I read that if you ate something from the other world, you would be stuck there. It was how Faze tricked you. But would it work in reverse? There was only one way to find out. I unwrapped the candy and I fed it to Emily in between sobs and I asked her to suckle it and consume it quickly. I saw a faint smile spread across her lips as she tasted her favorite snack. She slowly became more visible and I could see her detaching herself from the bed. 
The previously melted plastic that it fused were giving way and left a weave of cotton material floating as I lifted her off of the bed. She was in no condition to walk or talk. She would signal weakly about something I could not catch. My first priority was to get her out of there. I went back to the storeroom and opened it. There was only one door handle on the outside. I panicked internally until I closed it. Two handles on the inside, and I knew the silver one would lead me home. I opened the door to find myself in the familiar lights and smell of our room, and the sight of our very distraught parents. I had been gone for three days. We sent Emily to the hospital straight away, and called off the police report. There is no explanation for it, and there is no need to waste resources. We said that she got lost and we had found her. She was really weak when we got her back. She could barely stand by herself and wouldn't or couldn't speak properly. It took months of therapy for her to walk again. Another month to speak and in the following years, she would never step near the storeroom nor enter her bedroom by herself, always requiring somebody to open and close it for her. It took years of therapy to move on from the incident, and another few to not be afraid to sleep with the lights off and with the door closed. This event took a huge toll on my parents emotionally as well. They removed the handles on every door. We had to live in an environment which was physically and mentally safe for Emily, which they were glad to be able to provide. Till this day, I have no idea what or where I was. I only knew that if I didn't leave, I probably would never have the chance to. To this day, I don't think we are both truly out of the place spiritually. We would both have nightmares of being stuck on the same night, where the moon had a more orangey hue. Other days, I would hear people speaking as if they were right beside me, only for me to see that they're not there. These were only the minor things. My sister is in there longer and I can see the lasting effects in her eyes. She can see things as she never could. Although she tries her best to ignore it and never tells anyone. I know that because I too sometimes see humanoid shadows walking around in another society. Maybe another lifetime or another plane of existence. It's always a blur and benign but uh, sometimes a huge wave of nausea would wash over me when something more sinister walks past. I can only pray they don't see us, because I'm sure my sister can see them too.